Okay, it's time for Mission 5. Welcome back, everyone, of Devils and Swords. It is your host, the Super Blue Badger. And for today, we're going to be trying a whole entirely new style. Not entirely new. We used it in the first episode. Royal Guard, my favourite stance. I love Royal Guard a lot, and uh, we've built up a few points, but we're going to save it for today. I think you might know why, but I'm not going to tell you. We'll keep those points nice and safely tucked away under our belts for when we might die and need them. But for now, we will continue on into the world of Devil May Cry. Thanks for destroying the lock for me, Devil Boy! And welcome to hell! Please accept my gift. Don't be humble. Just take it. After all, we're bunnies, aren't we? <laughs> Well, isn't that special? To be honest, I was expecting something a little better than this. Whip out your shotguns, because it's duck season time. I love killing ducks, but they're not really ducks, they're blood goyles, and some of the most annoying enemies in the game. They're not ex exactly the hardest creature to deal with, but as you can see, they tend to expand and split into two or more blood goyles. They will infinitely replicate unless you stop them, but if you use your sword upon them, that will only cause them to replicate faster, so you must petrify them with a spray of healthy medicine bullets. The problem is, when you smack them, they don't tend to stay in place very well. So it really does start to get a bit frustrating after a while. As you'll probably see here, you just saw two of them split, and that is just more that you have to deal with. I'm not sure if you gain any additional red orbs, not like an, uh, a complete money farm, but it's really, it's, it's more than you should have to deal with. Just shoot them up, slash them up, done. They are more hassle than they are worth. Just take them out, bam. Try and get them up against the wall if you can, because they do like to fly away while you're slashing them. And now this. This was not in the original edition of Devil May Cry, which I find bizarre. So let's enter and see who we find. Welcome to hell! And we encounter our faithful jester, the motherfucker who just uh, we spoke to in the last uh, edition of RLP. We spoke to him, and he helped us open the door that Dante could not unlock with violence. A door you cannot unlock with violence, you say? Madness, because I kick my door down all the time. Absolutely hysterical. Yes, you are, Jester. A lot of people have been getting some feedback that he is quite an annoying character, but we're just going to have to deal with him. I think he was actually supposed to play a bigger role within the Devil May Cry, for Devil May Cry 3 game. Because he actually does make quite a few appearances, but he doesn't really seem to be a hostile or neutral or... How do I put it? Well, let's just say that he seems to be a third party, almost, and there's nothing really that involves him to the storyline other than his, uh, you know, his tips to Dante. I don't know why he's attacking us. There seems to be a sort of test of some sort. Do not touch the orbs, for they will sneak up on you and do a massive damage. Like that! Ow! Ow! Anyway, I shoot at him until he teleports and then slash his ass up while he's exhausted. It's not that hard. And as you see, I might be rapidly changing my weapons. Today, I'm demonstrating a new advanced technique that you do not see very often, known as weapon... Well, no, weapon cancelling. I'm not entirely sure if this works, in but it seems to be quite effective. Oh, blocked that one quite nicely there. But as it stands, the weapon cancelling ability is to... Switch weapons so it cancels out the slowdown animation of your weapon, swaps to the next weapon and slashes again, so you increase your weapon speed by twofold unofficially by rapidly unequipping and re-equipping your weapons. It takes some precision timing and it's a little tricky, but if you get it down, it is worth the damage that you can do with it. It's beautiful. I'll try to I'll try to show off the other methods of cancelling later on in the LP, but they can be really tricky, and I haven't been doing them for long. So we'll move on. 
and progress up the stairway until you get to that device that we saw in the last episode of the LP. What happened in the last episode? Let me recall with my blue badger intellect. We fought a giant tapeworm. We met Jester. And really that had barely any story relevance at all. Dante could not open doors without his sword. Or kicks, or with guns. A little silly if you ask me. And now that we have placed the board up there, it has unlocked a new path and activated a demonic platform. What does this demonic platform do, you ask? Well, because of my failed botched jump into uh, trying to air hike to the item, we're going to find out. Boing. Little too far up. Let's try that again. Miss. Miss. No. Dante. There we go. It's nothing important to see here, it's just a key item to get a proper, well, it's a proper key item, but it has no relevance to the story whatsoever, so there's no real re point in reading the text. Is this the right one? Yeah, blue door. As you might remember, within these doors is actually a uh, item that was uh, protected by a cage. And what's in that cage, you ask? Well, we'll see in just a few moments. Bitch! Damn it! Ow! Fucking hate that. Fuck it, done with you bastards. Get out my way. The pride demon serves no more than a fucking slowdown by this point. Like an annoying notch in the road where you're driving your Ford Fiesta. And this is where we use the item to unlock another item that we need to progress. And this is how you use a lever, Dante style. Yes, kick something and a lever will work. The soul of steel, the essence of a powerful and fearless soul. Its possessor need not fear hell nor oblivion. Sounds like quite a useful item, doesn't it? I could particularly use one of those. And so we see a reintroduction to the demon that I had forgotten the name of previously. The one that I had known as the span sand spitters all up in your vaginas in this joint. Well, no, he is actually the one of the seven sins, the sin of gluttony. I don't know why gluttony has anything to do with sand. If he spat, you know, whole cakes at me and maybe a full steak or two, maybe I would consider him a gluttonous creature, but no. Apparently you go to hell for eating sand. Seems like I'm going to hell, by the way. Nothing really special here. You just slash him up, dodge a bullet, well, dodge shit, kill them. That's all this game is all about, motherfucker. Bam, done, easy. And these are the Nexus. I think they're called the Nexus. Actually, I need to recheck that. But for now, we'll call them the less silly name other than the Vagina Eye. They are now known as the Nexus. Hello, Nexus. And as you can probably imagine, you want to get rid of them fairly quickly because they do become a bit of a frustration. They do get harder later on in the game. It's starting to get a bit boring with just uh, Rebellion and Cerberus as our we main weapons. I sure hope we're getting a new weapon this episode. Hint, 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 nudge. Down you go. Bam. And there we go. Just enter out the way you came because we need to use the springy platform. Be careful as you go down here because the enemy like to get a sneak attack on you because you can't see because of a dodgy camera angle. Thankfully, we just got a green orb to make up for it. Easy. BAM! I just love going BAM! That's what I feel like when I use the stinger move. BAM! It's beautiful. Down we go and take the uh, springy platform to the highest possible level to get to where you're... Well, your destination. Quite a nice mechanic, this. Easy enough. Why are we backtracking into the yellow door, you ask? Isn't this where we fought the electric tape worm? Oh, well, I wonder what we need to do here. I think I remember something saying that we need a uh, steel soul. Steal thy soul, they say. What could that mean? But for now, I am reminded of a certain song. I'm walking on sunshine. Whoa. I'm walking on sunshine. No, oh, all right, we're done. And also the other use for Cerberus. 
Anyway, I don't know. Whenever I see Dante doing that, just some walking on sunshine plays through my head all day long. Just sticks right in there. As you may know, this is a Blue Badger announcement saying that Badgers always walk on sunshine. I kind of screw this up a little bit. It's a little tricky because I'm not very good at using Cerberus, as you can imagine, since it's one of my least favourite weapons. Mostly because that slashing move where Dante does the triple rotation just takes so long, and by the time you've actually completed that animation, the monster has probably ripped your asshole in two anyway. Easy enough. So we have an elevator-like platform, a strange motif on the wall. And a... well... We'll investigate the strange motif first. And get our second mission. The secret mission, untouchable, to defeat all enemies while taking no damage. This is actually a lot harder than it seems. Do not try and take on these monsters with melee attacks and... You will see why not. There's a constant hail, a barrage of bullets, and even so, though they say they will fire enough arrows to block out the sun, there is no shade to hide in. For those that get that reference, you win a cookie. Three cookies. A wall made of cookies. But you will see what frustration I, an expert player of Devil May Cry, has with this secret mission, even though it is only the second one within the game. What you want to do is um, maintain your distance between the Nexus eyes because you cannot... Well, once you focus upon one monster with your melee attacks, the other two or three will be out of your camera range and you will not be able to dodge their uh, incoming hail of bullets. Within a certain... Ow, I got a little cocky there and I got my ass ripped up. But, um, yes, within a certain range, their bullets become much more accurate and a lot harder to dodge. Which I would say within about five, foot, um, five feet of the monsters is where you're going to start getting fucked up. So maintain a perfect range. With the Boney and Ivory being at level three, you want to just hang back. Rip, you know, just hold your gun sideways and be a complete G up in this joint, motherfucker. Be -be 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 Note that Gs do not get hit by piercing bullets normally. I am not bulletproof. Despite what 50 Cent might tell you. I am a secret member of the G unit for 50 cent. Don't tell anyone. But just take it easy, side to side, roll out the way, bam! Yep, here we go, just keep on laying in those bullets, do not get cocky. Despite my warning, I get cocky anyway. Success! And that's on Blue Orb Fragment. I can't remember which one by this point, though. I'll need to check. And this elevator, unexpectedly, is actually a speed performance test. So get your shotguns ready, folks, because there are ducks coming in from the sky. Okay, that's not a duck. If you time your slashes correctly, you will do a spinning attack that will pretty much take all of them out in one go. But I just like using the shotgun because it's kind of funny to watch them fall off the platform. It's sort of like shooting a baby in a pram on an elevator with no walls. Okay, that was a shitty analogy, but still. Down the go, easy enough. And we're finally fucking outside. It's beautiful to be outside, isn't it, guys? A breath of fresh air, that lovely full moon. Oh, fuck, I'm a werewolf! Oh, no, I'm not a werewolf. I forgot I'm a badger. Nope. And if you smash up the items here, you'll find there is an orb to recover most of your health. And you won't receive a penalty for using it because it doesn't count as an item. And by this point, I will not blame you to actually buy health items at this point, because this upcoming battle is actually quite difficult. So we're going to buy a large vital star and a blue orb to increase our health. Now sit back and enjoy two of my favourite characters of the game. Yeah. 
brother. It's been ages, but we finally have company. I see that. We must entertain our guest. You're right. We have to be gracious hosts. What should we do? How do I know? We need to come up with something. <laughs> brother, our guest is sighing. Sigh? What is sigh? Well, a sigh is when... Enough already! How long are you two gonna keep carrying on like this? In case you didn't get the hint, I'll spell it out. Your guest wants to go through. Got it? Our job here is to go on this pool. That's right, we can't let you pass. Welcome to Agony and Bruder, one of my favourite boss battles of the Devil May Cry franchise. They offer a slightly new experience, one that you may not have experienced before, whereas you have to be mindful of all, of all angles of your opponent because you have more than one of them. So, as you can see, I take my time. I am not making any unnecessary slashes because they will just simply block them easy enough. Be mindful if they start to charge their weapon, just lay into them a few times with a heavy attack, a downward slash, and you should be able to deactivate it. But yes, we are certainly in for a man sandwich of a time. Do not get caught between the... Well, actually, no, it's perfectly... It's perfectly suitable to get caught between these two muscular, squishy men crushing your, uh, cu crushing your intestines with their delightful abs. Just uh, be a little mindful of who's attacking and when, because the camera can have a little trouble accommodating them both at once. So you need to be ready to jump at any time. And as you can see with the Royal Guard stance here, that it is possible to grab or block their dropping shockwave, but it is not recommended unless you are a highly advanced player. And you might also notice that I am letting myself get slashed up quite tremendously, and there is a reason for that. You know what that reason is for? Well, you'll see in just a moment. BAM! Off goes his sword and leaves him entirely defensive, defenseless to my weapon buffering. Or my weapon cancelling, rather. And as you can see, I've taken out nearly half of his health in one go. How ridiculous. Yes, this boss battle can be really easy if you have a great sense of timing and skill. That's what this game is good for. If you have skill, you have nothing to fear. If you're a talented player, easy. And as you might have noticed there, the enemies can slash each other like complete retards. They can literally stab each other, their own brothers, with their massive throbbing swords. Yes, they're very sexual innuendoed swords. Right up their butts. Anyway, about... Uh, after the... Well, okay, I was too into that homosexual analogy there. Not that I have anything with that. Anyway, back to the boss battle. Regardless of this, you need to uh, be mindful. It can be extremely difficult, and it's why I recommend that you buy a health item before going into this battle. The reason that you buy it is because you will get hurt. Your timing will not always be impeccable unless you're some sort of quicksilver sly, sly, sly ass motherfucker. Oh man, I'm tripping over my own words. I'm doing that fast thing again, aren't I? Regardless of this, my health is quite low and they still have a lot of theirs. It is starting to get a bit tr troublesome for our dear partner, Dante. And whatever will we do, we'll bring out the big guns. That's what we're going to do. Use that weapon cancelling all up on his ass. We can do this, Dante. Together, you and I, we will defeat Agni and Ruda. Dante and the Blue Badger are the perfect tag team combination for this 2 on 2 battle, even though I'm doing nothing but sitting behind Dante and cheering him on from the sidelines. He just can't see me because I have my invisibility cloak on. And with that, the red one is down. You think the battle would be easier from here on in, right? Well, no. It actually gets entirely harder. Sorry for that MSM beep, I forgot to turn it off while I was recording this. Roll out the way! Do not let yourself get hit! One hit and we are finished! We Royal Guard blocked that perfectly! Cannot touch this motherfucker! Can I make it? Can Dante make it? One hit and we are finished! We need to BAM! The mission is ours. Wait! 
Yes, wait! We have been waiting for a long time! Yes, a very long time! For someone stronger than us! Someone who can control us! My name is Agni. And my name is Rudra. You shall take us with you. We can be a great help to you! Okay. But on one condition. What is it? Name it! No. Talking! Fair enough. As you wish. No talking. Good. And so you are now introduced to my favourite weapons in the game. Not my absolute favourite, that will come later. But they are still quite funny and they, you know, you'll see some beautiful combos later on. But for now, the mission is complete and we have made no story progression in this episode thus far. We just defeated some gatekeepers. Big fucking whoop. But I'm sure the next episode will be surely story driven and we will see much more of why this tower is here and why it was constructed in the next episode of Devil May Cry. CSCBBB. And now we shall save, and I will see you next time. See you, viewers.